Hey friends, welcome back to week three of From the Ashes. This week is all about enchantment, following your bliss. So I wanna start by the quote, follow your bliss. Follow your bliss, uh, I was having a discussion with a friend like, who said that? And it comes from Joseph Campbell, who is the creator of The Hero's Journey. Um, most people know him for that. And so there you go, tip of the day. Follow your bliss by Joseph Campbell. And yes, it's a little contrite. Yes, uh, people, you, you, you hear people say that all the blah, blah, blah. Follow your bliss, follow your bliss, follow your bliss. But it's something that I've really started to embrace and um, when I visualize, so week one of From the Ashes was about visual, uh, called vision, putting yourself in the picture. And the recommendation was to allow yourself four or five minutes a day to visualize the end result, the, the, the feeling that you will have when you, um, I don't want to say even arrive at the destination because really... Here comes another one. The joy is in the journey, right? But it is. It's about the journey and following your bliss on this journey. But also, it's important to have a vision like where you're headed. You need to know where your GPS is headed. And oftentimes, I say that my GPS is to the land of enchantment. So we'll talk about the land of encha enchantment. But this week one, putting yourself in the picture, visualizing what it is that you want for yourself what's the dream is it something is it meaningful creative work that you're visualizing for yourself and you see yourself doing something and it doesn't have to be and i guess de detaching from the outcome is like it doesn't uh, it's this job if i don't have this job i won't be happy no 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 the universe can think of something way better perhaps than what you can think of um is it, you know, searching for a life partner? Is it uh, wanting to travel more? Is it better health? Whatever it is that you are holding in your dream for yourself, this vision for yourself and imagining yourself there, the journey towards it is what we're talking about today, about following your bliss. Now, Week two was on fear, get in the back seat. So if you're gonna take this journey to follow your bliss, you cannot have fear driving. Um, fear has been so profound in my life. Um, just this last week, as I um, put in my resignation a week ago from you know leaving, um, choosing to leave my uh, career, uh, Afterwards, I was super thrilled and excited about, you know, this new journey and where I'm going and how I'll be following my bliss. And right on cue, here comes Jasper with the noisiest toy that he owns. Um, so hopefully that's not too distracting. But then immediately fear came up. Uh, I did write about it on uh, my most recent blog post on Let Love Rise um, called Taking a Leap of Faith or Enchantment, uh, Taking a Leap of Faith. So I invite you to check that out if if you're struggling a little bit with fear. But last week we wrote a letter from fear to ourselves, just bringing up what are all the things that we're scared of? What is it that, um, that keeps us up at night or perhaps keeps us from following our bliss, from searching towards the land of enchantment or just turning on the ignition in that car and being like, okay, here I go. <clears throat> I am gonna take that first turn and we're on our way. I don't know where it's going to go. I don't know how we're going to get there. But the destination is, uh, for me, I call it the land of enchantment. So back in, um, well, let me, let me, let me step back real quick <laughs> before I dive deep into the land of enchantment. Uh, I'm in my bedroom right now. I had really, really wanted to do this, uh, video from the river. Uh, it's one of my favorite places to be in Boise, but it is March 8th. Last night we had the full moon. She's still shining beautifully and brightly if you have a chance to see her. Uh, but the full moon in March is called the worm moon, and it is a symbolic time of the initiation of return to the spring. The earthworms come back and start so loud. Um, they, they start moving through the earth again, breaking through the frozen tundra and life is going to start to spring back every single day for the last week here in Boise. We've woken up to snow. Um, uh, right now it's currently uh, just finished rain snowing. And as, um, 
as as Idahoan as I try to be. <laughs> Let's be real. I've only lived here for six years. Um, somehow sitting along the river did not sound quite as enchanting as sitting in one of my most favorite places, which is my very comfy bed. So uh, that's, I just wanted to share share that little bit about you because I can also, there there's a perfect example of, I had this idea of just this really comfortable place to sit and talk today. And I thought it was gonna be one thing and life circumstances or the weather, mother nature, Gaia told me, no, just go home sit in your comfy bed, sit with your dog, and uh, record your video from there. So voila, here we are. Week three, land of enchantment. So uh, besides the full moon happen, uh, happening in Virgo last night, Virgo is all about the details of our life and putting, um, you know, getting checklists done, getting organized. And I know that the moon is shining a light on that for me. Uh, so think about that for you. But more importantly, what happened also last night, uh, about an hour after the full moon, was that Saturn, the beautiful outer planet Saturn, moved signs. It entered into the sign of Pisces. So for the last about three years, oh, since hmm, about March, no, it was March, March of 2020, Saturn has been hanging out in Aquarius. And Aquarius is um, the sign of uh, relationships and community and uh, friendships. And <clears throat> Saturn is about restrictions and rules and boundaries. And three years ago, we entered into the pandemic. And uh, we certainly experienced that. There were lots of rules. There were lots of boundaries. There were lots of restrictions around our community life and our, fan, uh, our friends. <clears throat> and so, <coughs> excuse me. So with um, the entering of Saturn into Pisces last night, it is a beautiful new beginning. Uh, Saturn will be in Pisces until I believe May of 2025. So uh, also, if you are in your late 20s or your late 50s or your late 80s, <laughs> uh, you will most likely be experiencing your Saturn return right now. So if um, you want to know more about that, go ahead and contact me. I'd be happy to look up your birth chart for you and let you know what that means. But Saturn returns are always a time of transition. We um, have one, two, <clears throat> some of us have three in our life because it takes Saturn a long time. Uh, to move around. <clears throat> so those wasabi almonds that I ate right before. I don't regret it. They're so good. <laughs> um, but it takes about two and a half to three years for Saturn to move through a sign. And so it's moving from this very uh, structured sign of Aquarius that it rules into Pisces, which is this very dreamy, um, ethereal, mystic uh, sign. And what is interesting about Saturn being in Pisces, uh, which also Pisces is the 12th house, uh, the 12th sign of the Zodiac. It is the endings that are necessary before the new beginnings, right? It is the, um, the kind of the unseen, um, and ethereal world. And so Saturn being there kind of puts structure around dreams. And so going back to your vision, if your vision was for that meaningful work or love or travel or better health or whatever it is that you're putting yourself in the vision of, Saturn is here to support you. And Saturn can sometimes be a very challenging sign, but mostly um, what I've been hearing, and I am just a beginning astrologer. I am just starting to learn. Um, I can point you towards um, Tani Nicholas and Molly McCord are two of my favorites. I listen to Kai Pacha, The Pele Report. Uh, lots of great videos and resources that uh, I can point you towards that uh, people who are way more knowledgeable than I am about it. But the big takeaway here is here we are, three years after a life-changing event. Whether your life in 2020 uh, was as dramatically flipped upside down as mine was, or maybe less or so, uh, we all collectively have felt something during that three-year time. And as we emerge 
out of it. The question is, now what? Is there something different that you want to do um, moving forward? And if you have that courage to face the fear and be and tell it to get in the back seat, you're gonna drive and you're gonna courageously move forward to follow your joy, follow your bliss to the land of enchantment. Um, I recommend doing this task. First of all, first question is if you um, if you had an afternoon just gifted to you, uh, plans got canceled or whatever, and it's a beautiful day, whatever a beautiful day means to you. Sometimes a beautiful day means it's raining and you are going to curl up on your couch with a bed and, um, or, or your bed <laughs> uh, with a good book or you're going to write um, or maybe a beautiful day for you is, you know, the birds are chirping, the sun is shining and you're taking a walk along the river, which is what I had hoped I would get to do on this March 8th. But not. Um, whatever your idea of a beautiful afternoon is, you are gifted this time. What would you do with it? How would you spend it? Um, what are some of the things that you love to do that maybe in your adulthood uh, you haven't allowed or gifted yourself the time to do? So I want you to think about that because that's a sign of your enchantment. We all pretty much have the same fears. We fear death. Uh, a lot of us fear death. We fear losing somebody dear to us. We fear financial uh, situations or not having enough money. We fear losing um, a loved one, maybe not to death, but a breakup, a separation. Um, we fear um, health uh, turning on us. So most of us have the same fears. I mean, even we can go with the traditional ones like the dark and heights most people have these fears. Clowns, <laughs> that's become a, a, a real one. Clowns or monsters under the bed, right? A lot of us, most of us share the same fears. However, when it comes to our enchantment, when it comes to our bliss, our joy, the things that light us up, that picture maybe that you found of yourself at the very beginning of this class where you're doing something that you just love, that is unique to you. We all have our unique imprint of what joy means. And so everybody's land of enchantment is totally different. Last summer, um, for perhaps the first time in my life, I literally followed my bliss where there, uh, I was looking at my summer calendar and I had wanted to travel with my kids and because they're with me 50% of the time and my ex 50% of the time, and they were going on a trip that required time off of work. I could, it didn't work out so that I could do something really fun with my kids, which I had hoped to do. So I had to kind of regroup. And <clears throat> one day I was doing yoga as I do here at the foot of my bed. And I um, got kind of this message to check my email, which was so random. And I happened to click on an email from a um, from Feather Pipe um, Feather Pipe uh, Retreat Center, uh, which is a place that I had looked into um, that I would love one day to host a retreat at. And this, for whatever reason, again, I clicked through on the retreats and just to see what was there. And I was looking through the retreats and there's this one called Bhakti Bliss, Bhakti Yoga Bliss. I didn't even know what Bhakti Yoga was. And I clicked on that and, oh, it happened to be on this one week. There was one week in the summer where I had no plans and I didn't have the kids. And uh, there was one room left at this place. So I thought about it. I did my yoga practice. Couldn't stop thinking about it. I was like, no, I'm going to sleep over it. It makes no sense. Who would I go with? Like, what would I do? And Or yeah, who would I go with? And can I afford it? And all those questions we asked ourselves. Yoga practice ended. I slept on it that night. I woke up thinking about it first thing. And then, so the, and then I panicked. I was like, oh, what if, what if that um, room is gone? So say hi, Jasper. Uh, so I so I went and I decided I'm just going to do it. I'm going to follow my bliss. I'm going to take this because this is something I've always wanted to do for myself. I had never been on a ro yoga retreat and uh, certainly not alone. And I did it. And I remember signing up for this 
room. It was, uh, the room that was available was in the Psy condo. It was this pretty much a glorified cabin out in the woods. And in this cabin, um, there could be another roommate. So I said, hey, if somebody else wants to join and um, share, I'm happy to share the cost. And if not, whatever. Turns out nobody ever came. Um, so I had this beautiful uh, house, like there, there was no electricity in it and there's no bathrooms. It's, it's literally just like a wood cabin in the middle of these woods, uh, just gorgeous place. I went there and that's where I started um, writing uh, my book, uh, which I'm, I've been doing a little bit at uh, Chipping Away at. It's a daily um, reader. I started writing that there and really placing things together. And the thing is, it was the drive to the uh, yoga retreat. And there's a couple posts of them that you could read about on Let Love Rise. Um, I think one's called Bumblebees and Butterflies. Um, I don't remember the other one, but there were, there were at least two because on the way there, all like the story that unfolded as I just had a vague idea of where I was going. I knew I wanted to stop in the Sawtooth Mountains. I didn't have a camping reservation. I just got this new car and I was like, oh, I'll car camp. Pulled in, I had a friend who told me about a campsite. Just everything that fell into place as I followed my bliss blew my mind. It was not even um, what I had hoped for, it was better. Everything was better. The yoga retreat, life changing. Not not just uh, Nat Kendall who led the the retreat and uh, all the beautiful people that were there as participants. This beautiful space in Montana, uh, this ca cabin that I got to stay in and really pour into writing um, and processing through everything that I have been working through. Um, it was just beautiful. Um, it was just a beautiful experience and I'm so grateful for it because it's something that I can look back on now and see how the universe supports us when we uh, have a vision for ourselves. There's something we know that is unique to us that we want to do and we go for it. We jump in and that's exactly what I did and I followed, I followed, uh, I've, yeah, I, 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 I want to say I followed the butterflies. They were everywhere. They were all around me and butterflies. For those of you that know me, I'm not flipping anybody off, but I carry this butterfly. You know, I've got a butterfly tattoo. It's been just a really um, symbolic animal spirit guide for me. Um, they were everywhere. So, and it's kind of like this idea of land of enchantment. As I was on this trip, as I was coming home, I was building the playlist. So I have playlists monthly on Spotify. Um, and we were there over the, the full moon as well. And um, the playlist that I built was called Land of Enchantment. So a couple nights ago, I put on the Land of Enchantment, just kind of settle in and oh my gosh, some of the songs that were on that just brought me back to where I was. It's only been um, six, seven, eight months. I'm not so great at <laughs> the math there on how many months ago July was. Uh, it's March. Anyhow, uh, listening to this music, there was so much I was grieving. There was so much pain. And the idea of Land of Enchantment came up for me during that trip because I, for the first time in my life, was pulling within. I was looking to myself for the love, for the joy. It wasn't going to be through another person and their company with me on this, this trip. Just everything about it, I knew that the only way to heal some of the really big pain um, that I had experienced, a lot of the grief that I had experienced, I alone can do that. People can walk alongside you in your journey, but only you can walk through the, the grief. And that's really what enchantment is for me now when I think about that, uh, this destination of of happiness as the end result. That's ultimately what that's ultimately what I want for myself for everybody is to experience true, authentic, courageous happiness because that comes from within. 
and this this trip and listening to this music and feeling all oh, the feels that I had when I chose this song and what it reminded me of, who it reminded me of, what I was working through was so um, kind of yin and yang here. It was so painful to remember, but then I was I had this real sense, and this was just the other night of, and here I am, and I'm okay. And not only am I okay, I am better than okay um, because I have learned as I have been following this joyful journey, uh, this post-divorce journey into uh, finding my authentic voice and who I really am and how I wanna show up in the world and what I want to bring and give back and all of those things that, that comes from within. The land of enchantment is in us and our search, our goal is to find it. So, the activity that I invite you to do is just like last year, how we wrote uh, last year, last week, <laughs> a letter from fear is to write a letter from enchantment uh, to ourselves. And it will start the same as last week's did where it says, you know, dear and whatever your name is, um, I'm your enchantment and this is what I want to tell you. I love it when, okay, so that's the prompt, dear, your name, uh, I am your enchantment, and this is what I want to tell you. Tell you. So, uh, this is what I wrote in the wee wee hours of the morning because of that full moon. I was up early. I think I wrote at about four forty-five this morning. So let's see what I wrote. My dearest Andrea, I am your enchantment, and this is what I want to tell you. I love it when we eat popcorn and have wine for dinner when it's just you and I. I do do that sometimes. I love it when we take walks with Jasper to the dog park. I love it when we sing and dance in the kitchen. I love it when we begin the day with writing, yoga, and coffee. I love it when we laugh out loud. I love it when we're with a group of people talking about soul care and spiritual alignment. I love it when we stargaze. I love it when we see Orion protecting us from above. I love it when we talk about the moon. I love it when we dance. I love it when we take the time to cook a delicious dinner. And I love it when we lounge on our bed on a Saturday morning. Sincerely, oh, I love being with you. Sincerely, your enchantment. So just taking five to seven minutes to write whatever comes up. Like what are the things you love? I have a different one that I did years ago, and again, um, I attribute this to Elizabeth Gil Elizabeth Gilbert um, for this activity um, that uh, she led us in um, back in October of 2020 at um, an online retreat. Um, and she just reminds us that our enchantment is our mission in life. It is our, um, what the French would say, our raison d'être, our reason for being, um, because Although, again, we all have the same fears, our enchantment is different. So, one more time, dear so-and-so, I am your enchantment and this is what I want to tell you. And write as much as you can, whatever comes flowing out. I love being with you. Sincerely, your enchantment. And then, let's take it one step further. Remember that idea of like, if you had an afternoon to yourself, what would you do? If you can carve out an afternoon and there's something on your list that you can go and do, go do it. It could be even going to the dollar store and buying a whole bunch of sparkly stickers and notebooks and pens and maybe only spending five, 10 bucks. It could be going to a nursery and buying some beautiful flowers. It is the, it spring is around the corner, I think. Um, it could be taking yourself to a movie, tucking yourself into your bed with a good book, uh, inviting a friend to coffee. Now. Yes, I do love the idea. I mean, I'm a very social person and I love to hang out with other people, but I really love the idea of this uh, particular um, gift of time to do something. If you're courageous enough to do it by yourself, it is life changing when we have the courage to go to dinner by ourselves, buy a concert ticket by ourselves, take a yoga retreat by ourselves, whatever it is by ourselves. And that's when we remember how much we love our own company. Because guess what? 
when I take myself out to dinner, I love exactly what I ordered. I absolutely wanted to go to this restaurant. Uh, this is exactly the movie I wanted to see. This is the perfect book for me on the perfect time. You get the point. So uh, yeah, take it further and gift yourself an hour or an afternoon. Um, and maybe someday you'll gift yourself a whole week to explore your uh, land of enchantment, to follow your bliss. Uh, last but certainly not least, the beautiful Fia continues to be our artist of choice for this series. Um, her album, Made of Stars, the song, Leaving It All Behind. That was also the song that I chose uh, to incorporate into my blog post uh, this week. So hope you read it. Uh, and if you do, that it, um, that it gives you some courage, perhaps to take a leap of faith. And if, if it does, please share in the comments, there, here, anywhere. Share with a friend. If you know somebody who's going through a really rough time right now, and maybe they need uh, to hear this message, please share it with them. But most of all, I just thank you for listening and I wish you a beautiful full moon Saturn in Pisces week. There's so much going on in the universe that is moving us forward into new beginnings, ushering us into a new way of living our lives. And I hope that you embrace it with authentic courage, courageously authentic. That's what we're after. That's what I'm after. That's what uh, enchantment and joy and happiness means to me is I know that I'm on the right path when I do the thing that causes me fear and I courageously do it because it feels authentic to me and uh, beautiful things unfold and I, I know that they will for you too. So thank you for being here. My hand is on my heart instead of up here in the namaste because I'm holding my phone. But thank you for being here from my heart to yours. The light in me honors the light in you. Have a beautiful week and I'll see you back here next week for permission. You and the magical universe and that will wrap up this series. Thanks for being here. Bye-bye.